Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokish. I'm here with the legendary journalist Ben Swan. For those of you that don't know his past, and I don't know who wouldn't, he's been one of our uh, insiders in the mainstream media who has relatively recently made the leap to independent media with Truth in Media, with Dash sponsorship, with, uh, the, with, with the... Um, with, with, with everything he's doing right now, it's just Reality Check is, is now revived as a brand again it after is. how long of a hiatus? For a year it's been gone. And, and thanks to cryptocurrency, thanks to the, the community uh, who has made this possible, he's back in action now. And I, I could sit down with you for for hours. And, you know, I, I'm really honored Likewise. because in, 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 a, in a recent speech he mentioned that, that I was part of his process of waking up from, from when he interviewed me. Part of it. Huge part of why I consider myself a libertarian was because of conversations I had with this guy. So there you go. Of all my work in the movement, I'm the most proud of being an activist activist and, and helping and encouraging and motivating other people. Now, he didn't need any encouragement or motivation, but at the right time, when he was figuring out all the Ron Paul stuff, I was there to be like, by the way, Here's the bottom of the rabbit hole, and he was like, "Yeah, it's a lot deeper than where you thought it was, right?" So I, I, I really hope that someday you write a book. I think, I think hearing your adventures in mainstream media and challenging that, and I guess a little more of his backstory is that he started covering Ron Paul before he was a Ron Paul supporter, just as as the only honest journalist in the room at the time, going, "Who is this guy?" and blew up as a result of that. A famous interview with Barack Obama as president. We'll link to all that stuff, but. You know, one of the things that I've seen, you know, in, in, in the libertarian community is that because we know we're fundamentally right about the evil behind the curtain, right, right. That, that sometimes we get carried away in speculation. Right. And for my relatively small compared to yours, at least in, in corporate media experience, I think the thing that people forget the most is that ultimately even mainstream media operations, their business is first. Right. And they're responding to market incentives that corrupt them from government. But I know especially because you, you had a, a year off that was under, under suspicious conditions, and it really wasn't, but a lot of people, lot of people thought it was. Went, went the wrong way with that. So what are the craziest theories that you've heard yeah. about who's behind? It's not lizard people, is it? Right, right. So how, how many lizard people have you worked for? Well, I, I don't know any of them, but some people are saying I'm a clone now, so who knows? <laughs> I, you know, I think, I think um, when we talk about media, so you got to understand that at the very highest levels of media, they, they, uh, there is a conspiracy. There is. In that, all these people are connected to each other, right? And they all are connected to politicians. So politicians and the, and the CEOs that control like massive organizations, those people are connected. But what trickles down through media is not a great conspiracy. I think it's groupthink. It's as simple and as unsexy as it's just groupthink. So when you get a, a group of reporters in a room together, right? Ron Paul's a great example. And you say to those those reporters, hey, so what do you think about this guy, Ron Paul? They're all going to say, oh, it doesn't matter, right? Because Fox News didn't talk about him or CNN didn't talk about him. And so if those guys up there aren't talking about him, then the local guys aren't going to talk about him either, right? There's this group think that says they set the agenda because they're smarter than we are. I've never believed anybody was smarter than me. So I would sit in a room and be like, well, wait a minute. Just because Fox News didn't cover it doesn't mean it's not a story, right? And I remember, I remember specifically with the, with the Ron Paul story that as I was talking about like his ideas, so it started out with about Ron Paul himself, but then looking at some of his positions on issues like war, right? Why are we in this country and, and why are we at war in Iraq? Because before I, I found Ron Paul, before I became a real libertarian, I was a neocon, right? I had this, that let's bomb everything because we're America, right? I had that mentality. And so coming out of that, started to think, well, when you start to question things, and as a journalist, you want to question things, well, why can't we ask questions about this, right? And so what I have found is there are, um, there's group thing that controls everything. A great example of that is vaccines. You can't, as a journalist in America, have an honest conversation about vaccines, because it's either you are for vaccines or you hate health and you hate vaccines, right? You're an anti-vaxxer. And you can't just be somebody who says, can we reasonably ask questions about all the chemicals we're injecting into kids? Why can't we ask those questions? Why can't we talk about it? But journalists don't think that way. Well, I want to I I challenge you on something that, that, that you said before, that it's, it's more of a social phenomenon. I, I, I generally agree with your analysis on that, and I, I, you know, I've seen enough to understand the groupthink phenomenon. And you say there's, a, there's the conspiracy at the top, but don't they reach down and kill stories and don't they reach down and fire people that don't go along with 
that so bigger the, story? One of the questions I was asked earlier is of all the stories I was doing, what, how did I get away with it for so long? And, and I think there's a really simple answer to that, which is that the people who, because every single script I've ever done has been approved by a news manager of some kind. There's never been anything rogue where it's like I sneak off and let's record this thing and it goes on the air. No, that doesn't happen. Fuck it, we'll do it live. Exactly. And so every news report I've ever done is approved by a manager, every reality check I ever did. But the news managers who approved them, approved them because they were acting like journalists. Meaning, I would present the story, and here are my sources, and here's where it's coming from. And they would look at it, they read through it, and it goes on the air, right? It was not until the corporate people at the very top of the organization started having their friends say, hey, what's going on? What's, what's up with this guy? He's embarrassing us, or he's making us look bad. That then that comes tra trickles down and comes down, and they say, you know, cut that guy off. But when it's up to the journalists, if, when we're doing those stories, even on vaccines, because yes, I've actually done on CBS in Atlanta, I was doing stories about vaccines and whether or not they're harmful to kids and whether or not um, vaccine court is a big scam, explaining all this stuff, they were allowing them on air. It wasn't until the upper, upper, upper management of the corporate level starts to get involved because now you're making their friends uncomfortable. So if that's the case, wouldn't that suggest, and again, playing devil's advocate in a sense here, that instead of saying, well, let's be independent, it should be, well, no, let's just focus on the mainstream media and challenge it to adapt and evolve and challenge the powers behind it to respond to the market more accurately and change the market demand for media. So, so the answer to that is yes, right? The answer is yes. But independent media, what does that actually mean? Right? Independent just means I'm not connected to one of those huge con corporate conglomerates, right? The other reality is this, that, that we have so few companies that actually own media in this country. Of the, the big networks and, and what you see on cable, if you actually have cable still, <coughs> or even channels on streaming, they're owned by like six corporations. On the local level, there's about eight corporations that own all the local media in the country, or local TV in the country. And so, when, when you see that there is a consolidation of media like we have, it's very difficult to break through that. Because, for instance, if a company says, we don't like what you're doing, they don't have to respond to the market because they control so much of the market. The FCC created these rules um, in the 1990s and the 2000s, right, that allowed for all the consolidation of media. If you didn't have that, just imagine for a second, if, if I could go out, Adam and Ben could go out tomorrow and we said, hey, there's a, a TV station in Atlanta and we're going to buy that TV station and we're going to own it. By the way, that used to be the case in the 1950s and 60s and 70s and 80s. <clears throat> families own TV stations. Then we would own that station and we would say, now we're going to compete with the other stations to make the most money. That's how the market works. That's not how it works anymore. Now you have one company. So there's no incentive for corporation or for competition within the mainstream media, so it has to come from the outside. Exactly. It has to come from the outside. But what we're trying to do, right, with what we're doing is to say, we don't want to be independent media in that we look like independent media. We want to actually be able to structure and complete and eventually get to, and by the way, Dash, if, if you thought my last proposal was big, wait for this one. What we eventually want to do is build a full streaming network that would rival what Vice does. You know, Vice taking over H2, which basically turned into what, the Food Channel with cussing on it. Um, it's, it's a joke, but build out like a full on 24 seven channel that's producing quality media content. All the, there are so many media people here, right? I'm, I'm so impressed with when we have been at these events, there's so many independent media people, but we don't have organization of platforms. Not control, doesn't mean one person says, no, veto that and let this through. Well, it can be if it's if it's voluntary, if there's no you know ulterior agenda. I mean, I, I think bringing people together in organization, voluntary hierarchies sure. even, and you know, I don't have a problem with that. You know, and when, when, I, when I lost my TV show on RT, uh, I say I lost it, like I just I couldn't find it, like my keys. No, no. When when I was canceled for political reasons, uh, there were a lot of people hitting me up saying, "Oh, Adam, we got to start a libertarian TV network now." And I was like, yes. "No, we we don't. Like we're we're starting from behind, hundreds of millions of dollars overhead to compete in that realm." But you know, so I said, if you're going to do it, you know, you got to do it online. It's got to be of that independent nature, and and. If, if that was something that could have happened, why hasn't it happened by now? Is it just the lack of organization and, and money and, and bringing that together so that we can have, like, I mean, this is, like, if you organize the network, said, Adam, we're, we're going to provide you with access to a studio in L.A. once a week and we want you to come in and do a half-hour show and we'll handle the production side of it. I mean, I, I can't do that now, but there would have been a point I've been like, yeah, and I know still 
there are a lot of other independent cr content creators who would be all about that. Absolutely, I think the, the so I, by the way, I remember when they wanted this to is, do this. This is your next big proposal though, right, That's through right. Dash? This, this libertarian network, right, when they wanted to do this. And, and they actually talked to me as well. And my response to them was, you're actually chasing a model that's dead already, right? So you're trying to create the Fox News model as libertarians, but Fox News is, de is dead. Now people will say, wait, Fox News is not dead, they have huge influence. Yes, among who? The, the average, older demographic. The average age of the person who watches Fox is 70 years old, right? And so that's that's a dead model. What, what I'm talking about is, um, it, because you don't want to build it out that way. What you want to do is create lightweight content that has that's meaningful, right? But that is good storytelling because you still have to be able to engage people. It can't just be preaching at you, shouting at you, take this to your friends and embarrass them because you know more than they do. It's about revealing truth to people. And the other thing is, I, I think a libertarian network is a terrible idea because it says to people, join our group think, yeah. right? Instead of saying, we're just truth oriented. If libertarians, and I believe they are, are, are right on many of the issues they talk about and deal with no no we're, we're right about everything right? <laughs> then if that's the case then that stands on its own without having to be labeled <clears throat> labeled as such I, I i think that's one of your greatest strengths in this is that you you came into this like literally your process of awakening was as a journalist just trying what's up with ron paul and and i, I really appreciate that. something that, that i have to remind myself of uh, a lot as well in my own production and you know, I hope someone even watching this video isn't going, "Oh well, geez, it's a, it's a couple of libertarian content creators conspiring." But no, that we're we're able to communicate even a message that's that's ideologically motivated in a way that has that mass appeal, not because we're prettier or better produced or smarter, but because we're we have that integrity, we bring that authenticity. To, to what we're doing. So I'm, I'm really glad that we have that from you in the movement. I hope we can work together in the future Absolutely. one way or another. And, and you're on Steemit, right? <laughs> I'm not on Steemit. So, so I have heard over and over, you've got to get on Steemit. In the last 24 hours, I've heard this like 100 times. So I am committed in the next 24 hours to getting on Steemit. Right, well, that's where I can help you out. Awesome. And I, I want to make sure that everybody who's new to the platform gets a leg up. So we're going to be sharing Ben's content awesome. on Steemit. Awesome. You can follow me at steemit.com at Adam Kokesh. But more importantly, Ben, where can people hook up with you, right? So truthinmedia.com is the best place to find it. If you're on Facebook, I know some of you hate Facebook, but those of you who don't, uh, you can find me at facebook.com slash Ben Swan Reality Check on Twitter, Instagram, all those places. Just search the name, you'll be able to find it. And again, for those of you who say, oh, I wouldn't touch Facebook, your friends are touching it, your family's touching it. So you get on there and you get our content and you can share it with them on a platform that they, that they use. Thanks so much, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.